Welcome back to the third installment in our full Unify stack using Unify Controller version 5.1.1 beta. And what we're going to do now is behind our lab switch, we are going to put an access point in. And I'm going to be using, I have a brand new box of Unify AP, the standard APs, long range, uh, LRs. And these are a passive PoE device. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our switch and we are going to go to port number three and we're going to take it off of PoE Plus and put it on the 24 volt passive and so what we should see is that this icon should change in just a minute All right, so now we have the PoE icon, and I'm looking over, and the on the standard UAPs, the LEDs are a little bit different than on the Pros and the ACs. So right now I'm looking at an orange blinking LED, and we will pull up, let's see, while we're waiting for this thing to boot, we will pull up. Let's see, trying to find just the standard APs here. Go to legacy products. And so here's what your standards look like, the uh, standard UAPs, the older models. But let's see what we've got here. Okay, so this is the model that's, that's plugged in. And you can see that it's 2.4 gigahertz radios only with 300 megabits of throughput and no 5 gigahertz and a range of 183 meters. So let's go down here and see if, ah, here it is, quick start guide. So we're going to pull this up and real quick we're going to talk about what the LEDs mean because I think, I think there are some people who just take the quick start guides and they throw them away but these quick start guides are chock full of really useful information. So let's look at the LED color real quick. So if we're flashing amber, we are initializing. If it is steady amber, it is at factory default waiting to be integrated. If it's alternating amber and green, the device is busy, do not touch or unplug it. This usually indicates that a process such as a firmware upgrade is taking place. Okay, well let's go back to these and finish this. So if it's quickly flashing green, this is when we hit that locate option. So when we pull up an AP and we hit locate, it flashes the LED quickly. If it's a steady green, it indicates the device has been successfully integrated into a network and is working properly. Steady green with occasional flashing means that the device is in an isolated state and all WLANs will be brought down until an uplink is found. Let's hop back over here and you can see that we're at 10100 with PoE, which is good. That's what we wanted. So let's re refresh this and see if this one, there it is, pending approval. Beautiful. We'll go ahead and adopt this. We are connected, but we need upgraded. So immediately I'm going to upgrade this. So the next video that I'm going to do after this is I am going to do some clarification on what is a trunk, really, because in the last video I was like, oh, hey, this makes a, a truck port. So I'm going to do some, we're going to drill down into what a trunk is and how to do some more configuration on this Unify switch so you can see that. I'm looking over, I'm seeing the access point is uh, blinking between orange and green. Orange and green. Device is busy. Do not touch or unplug it. This usually indicates that a process such as a firmware upgrade is taking place. I'll tell you, Ubiquity, I think they spent a lot of time on these quick start guides, and these things are awesome. I, I think a lot of questions can be answered just by reviewing the, the quick start guide. And provisioning is done. We are connected, so we'll pull this guy up. 
And we'll go over here and we'll just say this is our lab UAP LR and we'll save that. So now we can, uh, let's drill into this a little bit. So this does finish our stack, our full stack. So we've got the lab USG, we've got the lab switch, and we've got the lab access point. But let's look at this a little bit. Um, so on the details, you can see we get the MAC address, the model, the software version, the IP, the uptime, the number of users, and the number of guests. We can look at our uplink, so it tells us that we're plugged into it tells us that we're plugged into lab switch number three at 100 meg full duplex. How much data we have uh, sent and received. Then we can look at the radios and it tells us what channel we're on, the power, uh, packets and bytes in and out. Uh, transmit, receive, retry, or dropped. Also see the number of users. If there were users connected to the device, they would be listed here. If there were guests, guests would show up here. We go to configuration. Alias is where we change that name. We can look at the radios. I never recommend, and if you ever take a, at least the last time I took the official Ubiquity course, they never recommend either letting the software and the automatic settings set these for you because they don't know the physical environment or anything. I mean, it's just, it's it's a best guess by the software. So, I always, when I design my RF environment, I always manually set the the channel and the power. And then there's also the min RSSI, and what that does is that's how weak the signal or how strong the signal is from a client to this access point before the access point will disassociate the client and, and let them go to another access point or force them over to another access point. Very useful when designing RF. Um, you didn't used to be able to do this in the in the GUI. You used to have to do this in a in like a configuration file, so this is nice. We can look at our WLANs and what's here, and we can actually come in here and we can enable or disable this SSID, this WLAN on this radio. Um, we are We'll get into like WLAN groups and some things like that in some future videos, but right now we're just in the default. Look at the network. We could come in here and configure this with a static IP if we wanted. Or we could just continue letting it use DHCP. Airtime fairness. We can do a custom upgrade or we can forget the device. So we did change the um, channel and the output power, so we'll apply those changes. And you can see that my wife's iPhone hopped on this guy and she's connected. She, her transmit is 144 megabits. She's the only one on there. So um, for the moment, let's see if now she's at 52. She must be roaming around a little bit. Maybe. This is it for the full stack for now. Come back for the next video, which will talk about the Unify switch and the VLANs and trunking. And then we will continue to explore the Unify controller in further videos. We've got all kinds of videos on deck. So many. I appreciate you guys giving me all the, you know, the uh, suggestions for videos you want to see, plus everything I've got lined up. And I'm cranking them out as fast as I can, so hang in there. If you like the video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. And we'll see you at the next video.